Okay, we're live in one minute. One minute. Live in 30 seconds. Fifteen. Live in ten. In five, four, three, two. One live. Good evening, everyone. We're excited to have this opportunity to be on with you today. I'm excited to be, be out back in South Carolina. I was in Florida last week. I'm in South Carolina today and next week. I'm thinking about being somewhere else, but I'm excited that I can live that kind of lifestyle thanks to my 4X account. And I just appreciate all of you for coming. Uh, on air with us today, those of you who are listening by radio, those of you who are, who are online listening to us, those of you who are on Facebook, and those who, who of you are on other means that we have going, social media, we're excited about being with you today. And uh, we're excited because uh, there's some great things happening. Uh, God is doing something that's exciting for us in our lives today. When I left, uh, South Carolina, I, went, I was headed to Florida. I was behind a storm and then coming back uh, to South Carolina, I was in front of a storm and I'm in the midst of a storm right now. The trees are leaning and the rain is periodically coming down, which says that I'm on the east side of uh, the storm. And is, as it has moved past Louisiana, we're praying for all of our friends and family who are in Louisiana and in Mississippi and in the pathway of the storm, we're trusting the things are okay. In the mountains here, we're only worried about no, not so much the wind, but flash floods. Water that uh, is, has come out of the sky is hitting the streams and whatnot, and they can't handle it, and it's overflowing and pushing away people's homes and whatnot, mudslides and whatnot. Nevertheless, God is doing something, and we'll be careful to listen to God. And so that pushed our mind toward our topic today as we talk about Isaiah 43, uh, beginning with uh, verse 16 through 21, uh, as we talk about sometimes God requires us to step into the unknown, we step into an area where uh, we have not, uh, uh, have no precedent for. You know, normally when we make decisions, we base our decisions on something that's happened in the past, something we read, something we heard. And, but when there is absolutely no precedent, to what we are experiencing and the decision we're about to make, then we are really afraid and we come into a place where we we don't know, uh, we're uh, uncomfortable with it and we're scared. It's, it's an unpleasant feeling and we're challenged. And so God is doing something this present moment in our lives as we talk today that many of us have absolutely no precedent for. When we talk about uh, the forex market most of us have no precedent our parents did not participate our auntie didn't participate our cousin didn't participate and so we we have absolutely no frame of reference and so sometimes we seem to be being pushed towards something that's unprecedented and we have to understand have to ask, answer the question is where god is what god is showing me is it for my good is it does god want to bless me God wants to multiply my seed and make them like the stars of the air? Does God wish only for good things to happen to us? Does God really want me to enjoy the abundant life? And is God choosing an unprecedented route for me to enjoy the abundance of life? And so we want to talk today about stepping into an area where it is unprecedented. And we're going to base that on Isaiah 43 verse 16. And today we have with us uh, Miss Tasha M. Dyer and Dr. Bike, Craig Bikewood. Uh, Mr. Rogers is at an appointment and he may 
get on with us a little later when he gets out of his appointment. He may not. I think he may be locked out. And so uh, we're just uh, excited about the opportunity to share uh, in more detail with with the Dr. Byford and Miss Dyer. Miss Dyer, how are you today? I am wonderful, Bishop. I'm so glad to be here with each and every last one of you all. And so as we get started today, let me first thank, you know, just say hello to our radio broadcast audience. Those of you at Rejoice904.com, Facebook, YouTube, um, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, right? Wherever you're streaming from, wherever you're joining us from, share, share, share the information. This is definitely life-changing. Hello, I see you all chiming in. So, but this is definitely life-changing. And before we dive in, you know, I definitely want to make sure that we're praying for continuously praying. Thank God the storm has passed. If you guys know me, I'm originally from Louisiana. That is my home. And so just understanding the anxiety and everything that was going through everyone on the anniversary of Katrina as this storm rolled in. So yes, there were things with property damage, things transpired, but at the end of the day, I'm thanking God that it was nothing like what we, what we experienced previously. So just continue to pray for everyone and as they, you know, whatever assistance is needed as they kind of roll through this. And then Bishop, you, see guys, this is what we mean about being your own bank. You know, Bishop is going to broadcast live on location, right? He's going to be live on location from somewhere. It's funny because last week he was in Florida and Jacksonville. This week he's back in South Carolina. And let me say back because he's been on vacation for so long you know, but at the same time, and right before we went on air, he's talking about being in Tampa. So I'm just here to let you know that this is something where you really control the narrative of your life. We are challenging you all today to step out of the familiar and definitely learn a skill set and learn how to become your own bank. Don't forget to share. So hello, Bishop and Dr. B. Dr. B, are you with us? Yes, I am. Miss Tasha M. Dyer, a.k.a the trade whisperer. I also wish all of those individuals in your family that were in the path uh, continued safety and quick recuperation from anything that happened. Blessings to all of those, any listeners that were affected by the storm. So welcome to our radio broadcast. So happy to be on location in Tampa, Florida, just ready to have another riveting conversation where we can raise our vibration through the word of God to make sure that we dialogue and more importantly, put a vibration out into the airways that is going to be conducive to the truth that you know. And that is that God knows that you deserve all the wealth and abundance that is coming to you. So let's be prepared for it. Let's be at a frequency that matches it. And let's continue to have these kind of dialogues when it's just you and you, when you are talking to you, you should be saying the same things we're saying on this radio broadcast. Welcome, everyone. Exciting, exciting, and a great valid point, uh, Dr. Bifewood. Many times that self-talk gets us in trouble. We talk ourselves out of our blessing. We talk ourselves out of uh, the move of God in our lives because uh, we are trying to, we are basing that self-talk on something that we have previously experienced, but God is saying to us, he wants to do something absolutely new in our lives, unprecedented and never happened before. We don't know anybody that ever happened to, but God is able to do those kinds of things in our lives. When we think about uh, the, the Red Sea had never been split before, but God opened it up. The Jordan River had never been opened up the way it was when Israel walked by on, on those rocks and stones. And so we're just excited about God now in this time. And our own time is doing something absolutely unprecedented. And we're going to see the miracle of God as he opens up door, as he uh, begins to create brand new opportunities uh, for our lives as he reshuffles the deck and uh, redistributes wealth in this land. And I certainly want all of us to be a part of that. And I believe one of the ways that he's using is that he is, for the first time, uh, revealing something that has been hidden in plain sight. And we did not have an opportunity to learn about it. We, did, we were not talked up, talked 
uh, taught it in college, nor in high school, nor in trade school. No one ever showed us uh, this information that has been hidden in plain sight. And God, God has uh, it available to us. And we must not turn our backs on it because it's unprecedented in our time. And we're excited. Miss uh, Dyer, do you have the, uh, the scripture? Absolutely, Bishop, I do. So here we go. What it says is, I am the Lord who opened the way through the waters, making a dry path through the sea. I called forth the mighty army of Egypt with all its chariots and horses. I drew them beneath the waves, waves and they drowned. Their lives snuffed out like smoldering candlewick. But forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I am going to do, for I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. The wild animals in the fields will thank me. The jackals and owls too, for giving them water in the desert. Yes, I will make rivers in the dry wasteland so my chosen people can be refreshed. I have made Israel for myself and they will someday honor me for the before the whole world. Now, you know what God said? Forget all that stuff that happened in the past. You know, people talking about, well, I can't do it. I don't understand. See, this happened back then. This happened in 1972. This happened in 1973, way before Miss Dyer was born. This happened. And, and, uh, the Lord said, forget all that stuff. Uh, all that, all that stuff that people bring up you, why, uh, they can't do what God is calling them to do. And so God says, I'm about to do something brand new. And in order for it, for it to be new, it has to be something that you haven't experienced, a path that you have never walked before, an opportunity that has never presented itself to you before. God says, I'm about to do it. I'm going, I'm going to put some streams where there's never been streams. And I want you to know that uh, uh, currency, the word currency means uh, many streams. And God says, I'm about to provide some streams that you've never experienced for. And he said, the animals are gonna thank me for those streams that I'm going to provide. And God is providing streams. And so we must not uh, get uh, hung up on one stream of income, an old stream that has pretty much dried up and, and things are drying up in a lot of places, but God's presenting new streams of opportunity for us to be involved in. And we must be excited about that. Miss Dara. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's, it's real funny. I was literally just having this conversation um, last night with my dad and, you know, just really talking about um, retirement. And, and then it's so funny how it surfaced back today in a conversation with another young lady um, who's actually been trying to prepare for retirement because you begin to understand that what you had and, and the things that you thought you had aren't real or is real, but it's not enough. And that there are more things that you have to do in order to be able to live a life you want. And so when I was actually speaking with my father, one of the things we talked about, because there is a comment, we've talked about it on this call about the younger generation and what they see and the things that they do, right? We, we've discussed that as far as what we want them to do. And so some people look at them as lazy, but when my grandfather worked, for example, they had the defined retirement, right? The defined benefit, they had those plans in place. And yet now it's a contribution. Even the military has shifted to some sort of contribution to where it's no longer where you can work for a company for 30 years and think you're going to walk away with this nice retirement. You and your family will be taken care of until you're passing and, and things. It's not a reality anymore. And so that whole shift has to take place. So this is right in alignment. And, and so and then, you know, you have so many conversations. One of the things that I was speaking um, to you know our BYOB family about was about being able to edify and empower yourself, understanding who you are, because we often define ourselves by you know that's why I like when the scripture just said you know forget all that, just forget all that, just forget mm -hmm. all that, because mm -hmm. we define ourselves by what we went through, 
we'll define we don't define ourselves by who we are we define ourselves by what we went through where we've been what transpired in our lives and we got to get out of that because we are not who we were we are not what we've been through so if we can forget all that and for, and, and understand that we have to take control of our life we have to put in something and the ways that it used to be is no longer the way so we can't do what they did and expect they didn't even like the results they got so we can't do what they did and get the results they got that they didn't even like we're not even going to have that so it's time for us to have that mental shift we have to exactly and in the group that uh that the, the prophets have to be talking to or uh, the children the grandchildren of those folk who god brought across this red sea he brought across the Jordan River and, and the, the, the uh, Jericho walls fell down for all those are uh, 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 just descendants of those people. And uh, uh, they did, wouldn't, they had, their families had it personally experienced that and they still did not have enough confidence in God. God had already done the unprecedented in their life. You know, that Jericho wall falling down because they were out there shouting and blowing the horns and dancing. And, and 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 that was unprecedented you know and, and so uh even though god's working in our lives and we we god said forget all of the, the bad stuff that has happened and i'm about to do something new in a different place a place where it, uh it hadn't been fertile before it's now fertile ground it's been unknown uh this territory that i'm, I'm about to make fertile hadn't been known for growing crops and and developing uh, uh farms and, and being a place the bread basket of the world i'm going to make it happen for you guys and so i don't know if we understand that uh over there in in africa and parts of northern africa and egypt that was a bread basket of the world that's where all the food came from and i can see that shift happening again and the uh, somebody said the other day that that's where the rain is, is happening. And, th and that's going to be the breadbasket of the future. Africa is going to feed the world again. God's going to do something different. And there's going to be a shift in wealth. And uh, we have to be a part of the wealthy place. God's going to put us in a wealthy place. And he's using different vehicles. And we can't be reluctant to be a part of those different vehicles that God is is about to use and we can't run away from them because it's not a nine to five unfortunately the thing that we are familiar with causes calls for us to be a subservient and hit a clock every day and be accountable to, to somebody else who controls uh the floor of the of the stream of money but god is calling us to a point where we need to be excited about the opportunity that he's creating for us. Dr. Bankwood. You know, I would like to ask the listening audience and my esteemed colleagues to allow me the opportunity to make this point. Just give me a little bit of patience. Now, prior Take to- Take your time, Doc. Take your time. Thank you. I, I you have Mr. Rogers' time. No, I, no. Look, I, was saying, I was getting a little nervous. I said, you gotta ask, you gotta ask. <laughs> What are you about to say? Exactly. <laughs> what is he about to say? So prior to this call starting, we were having a background conversation about health, about taking care of our body. And whenever I think about the body, I think about the fact that the body is 75% water. And I've made the point before that the earth is 75% water. And it makes sense because we are of the earth. How you do one thing is how you do all things. When I look at this scripture, Bishop Rodinson has broken down the main point, but there's a theme here. There's a theme of what is it that makes the market move? Liquidity that I have to pull out of this scripture. The first reference, the Lord talks about the sea. And then he references the mighty waters. Then he talks about springs. My children went to Lithia Springs not a couple of weekends ago. It is a body of water that rises up. Then as Bishop referenced, we're talking about the streams. And I am doing a consulting project in which we're referencing Oklahoma and Texas. And we're talking about the Red River. And it's called the Red River because that's the color of the soil. 
There's so much energy that we put on water, so much energy that we put on liquid. Then he says, I will provide the water while you're in the wilderness. And then finally, I will give drink to my people. So the purpose of this scripture is the purpose of this scripture. But I just wanted to call out the story behind the story. And that is the significance of how important it is that we recognize what water is in our life. At about 4.35 p.m., because I'm outside in the sun in Tampa, Florida, I said to my daughter, let me start drinking some water because I've got to be on the radio. So even in preparation for the show, we're doing the same thing that it says in this scripture. So I just want to remind everyone the importance of understanding the power of water, springs, streams in our life. Let's stay hydrated with the spiritual abundance that we are discussing each and every day on our calls. Okay, drop the mic, show over. <laughs> Ms. Dow, can you talk about liquidity in the market and, and, and how that relates to what Dr. Bifewood was saying to us? Oh my gosh, I just say drop the mic. So over, so over. But I, but, but seriously, when you, when you look at what he's talking about as far as in the scripture, when, when you're talking about flowing, right? Currency flows, liquid, liquidity. We want the money to flow through the market. It is $6.6 .6 trillion a day moving through the market. See, the problem is it's not an economic problem. The problem is it's not a financial problem out there. The problem is it's none of that. The problem is mindset. Because the reality is, is some of you guys don't drink water. Listen to what Dr. B just said, right? Look at what the scripture is saying. And look how he just pulled that out of the scripture. And so the reality is, is God is making, you know, rivers in dry wasteland. But yet we know, we know, and we've been told, what do you tell your children? Drink some water, drink some water. We always talk about some drink some water. But yet some people choose not to drink the water. You know, if you don't drink the water, you're going to have a health problem. You know, if you don't touch it, you're going to have issues in your life. You know that that's what's going to happen, right? We know it. But yet some people refuse and won't drink the water. And so when you think about the market, we know it's $6.6 .6 trillion. It's flowing, it's currents, it's liquid, it's moving. But depending on where you choose to remain, where do you choose to sit? See, the, the currency not going to come find you. The water is not going to force itself into your body. The currency is not going to force itself into your wallet. It's not going to just flow your way. You have to position yourself to where it is. And, and so are you willing and ready to just position yourself to where it is? See, we know it's over there. We see people with it. We see them doing well. We see them living their best life. We see those things. But the reality is, is are you really ready to see it for yourself? Are you ready to reposition yourself? Are you gonna drink the water? Because you have to put yourself where the currency is. The currency is not gonna come find you. You just gotta put yourself in a quadrant where it's at. Where is it flowing? Put yourself where it's flowing so you can live in abundance. If you are not where the water's flowing, you're going to wither away. So it's the same thing in real life. Are you going to wither away? Or are you going to reposition yourself? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so we have to be willing to step into the unknown. And sometimes it may be uncomfortable. It may be scary. Uh, the atmosphere may be unpleasant to be afraid. But if we are willing to trust God, and sometimes we have to be unwilling to hold on to what's familiar, because we're trying to hold on to familiar. And unfortunately, uh, as has been alluded to earlier, what we're familiar with hadn't been that prosperous for us. We've been, you know, it's, it's, we've been on the low side of the prosperity, and and so well, why are we still holding on to that? You no, know, it's like when God led Israel out of Egypt, you know, they were out and they were experiencing the unknown of the desert. And many of them were wishing they were back in slavery. They were, they began to think about, you know, we had leeks and melons over there. At least, you know, we were slaves, but we did have some, some watermelon. And uh, they were excited about, the, you know, that that was, you know, that was self-talk, as Dr. Fifewood talked about earlier. You know, and, and so we have to be willing to give up the unfamiliar uh, and, you know, 
for 40 years, you know, I pastored a church and I was used to going down to the church every day for 40 years. And, uh, uh, you know, now I had to give up that familiarity of getting up early in the morning. Folk called me in the late in, in the night, worry, worry me up, talking about they fighting and fussing and can't find the children and all that kind of stuff. And uh, they expect the pastor to come help with, with those kind of things. And, and you good pastors, you will do that. But I'm saying, you know, you have to shift. You have to be willing to make another, uh, to, to play another role in life. And that role is to come familiar with cash. <laughs> familiar. <laughs> you familiar with cash. <laughs> yeah, get familiar, get familiar with, you know, just have, being able to, to do what you need to do and, and not be uh, uh, dependent on, tied to a, a budget, but being able to, to, to move in the flow and actually not having control of that budget, but somebody else controls that budget because they control what they're going to pay you and they pay you uh, pennies by the minute. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just, you know, grapple to the unfamiliar. So you have to walk into a place where you have to let go of the past, God said, and uh, begin to walk in faith. I think that's a chapter that we are, uh, uh, we walk by faith and not by sight. That's the unfamiliar place. I think that's a chapter in in, in the book. What's the name of that book, Miss Dyer? Hidden in where? Blank. Hidden in plain sight. Hidden in plain sight. Yes. Oh, I think that's yeah. a, oh, we need we need we need this we need a plug here. here we got yeah, I'm giving you the plug right. if you just this take it. This is and, and, uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> you can take that, that, that on Amazon, but that's a whole yeah. chapter in the book. Be about women to leave the familiar. That's the There's a whole chapter in there about leaving the familiar and stepping out on faith and walking by faith and not by sight. See, sight says, uh, I remember seeing that. I've been on this path before. This is this is something that familiar, and I know this bridge is safe because I've seen it before. And I understand that. And so I'll cross the bridge. But now your God is asking you to cross a bridge that you have not uh, seen or experienced before. And whether or not you're going you're gonna, to uh, experience faith or not, God is still waiting on some of us to experience faith. Faith says God wants the abundant life for you. Faith says that God wants nothing but blessings for you. Faith says God uh, is with you in your journey. So are you going to exercise faith? Now that's good, Bishop. And sometimes we got to take a step back and really analyze these things that we're fighting for, or these places we're fighting to stay. Um, do you realize $15 an hour is what many people are fighting for? I know some people start around 12, you know, you start around 17, wherever it is, you know, I, I, I never, you know, outside of me being a teenager before I joined the military, I've never really had to experience that, thank God. And even at retirement, I get to dictate my life, right? I get to control my life and 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 how I want to live my life and what I want to do. And so, because when I retired, you know, that space I was in, I ended up having two major surgeries after I retired. And that space of uncomfortableness or the unknowing and the and, you know, just being in that space, I was not, you know, I was not okay with it. I was not okay. And I just made a decision that whatever it took and whatever was required, I was going to make that transition. And so when I think about people fighting for $15 an hour and them thinking that that's going to make a difference, you see the definition of insanity is consist consistently, continuously, all the time doing the same thing and expecting a different result. You know, so when I started working, it was 385. I mean, at what point has that created wealth or even comfortness? It hasn't. So we've been increasing, but where are we comfortable? Where is wealth? Where is any of that? Regardless of what you're making, you know, you're either slaving for what you're making if you're making a decent salary. So my point is, is that's 25 cents a minute. $15 is 25 cents a minute. So I know even at the smallest lot size, you can do better than that. Even, even when you're, when you're learning this skill set, you can do better than that. So I know you're worth more than that. Like you can do better than 25 cents, which puts you in a position where you're doing better than what America is fighting for. So I don't, it's, it's really like a no brainer to me 
So uh, it, it is, I can, I can do better than 25 cents a minute in the market, you know, even if I made a dollar, let's, let's calculate that one time 60. What did you make? You know, it's, it's, come on now, guys, we, we, we got this. Dr. Backwood. One of the things that came to mind when Ms. Dyer was making that point is I saw a meme recently where a gentleman drove up in a Lamborghini and he was speaking to his employees. And one of his employees said, oh man, I love that car. I saw that, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> and he said, well, if you work hard and do everything you're supposed to do, I could buy another one next year. <laughs> no, I saw that, Dr. <laughs> so we really do need to put ourselves in a position of strength. And to switch subjects just a little bit while I have the floor, two very interesting emotions went through me today. I received two phone calls from high school teammates. The first high school teammate said this to me. Our teammate, nameless, um, you know, I don't want to put his family on the air, was found dead this morning. So obviously that hit me in the gut because I had just reconnected with him. And this scripture clearly says, lay there, never to rise again. And there's so many opportunities where we should really take seriously the time we have here and the time we have with people. Because the last time I saw him was at a funeral and we decided we were gonna keep in touch and neither one of us did so. Well, the second phone call that I received was from someone who wanted to have a conversation about crypto and wanted to learn more and wanted to, to do everything that they could do to provide counsel to the people in their circle. So that's the other side of this scripture. I am now springing up and I'm realizing, and it's so funny, the person was talking about all of the mistakes they made financially in the past and how they wanna do better now. Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. And one of the things I said to that teammate was, hey, we need to get you going, doing a new thing. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? So in the same day with former high school football teammates moving in two totally directions. So what's the point, Dr. B? One, let us cherish our relationships right now. Two, let us cherish our ability to chase our wealth in abundance. Absolutely. And, and let us take advantage of every opportunity that God put in front of us. When we hear God, we need to move and not be reluctant to move forward on that. We can't assume that we, we have time to act on. Because a lot of times we talk to people about this opportunity and they, you know, they, they, they delay, they uh, put it off, you know, they wait and time is, is ending up. And, and certainly we want to uh, invest our time, our energy and our cash in a way that it will multiply and we will leave a legacy for our, our children. And so we have to decide whether we're gonna leave the unfamiliar and whether or not we're truly gonna trust God. I don't, I don't know if, if we, we, we know that God is a part of this process, but certainly those of us who are involved understand how deeply God is involved in this process. God gave us the strategy. He used one of us to reveal the strategy. And it certainly is it's a move of God. And uh, because how do you step into a, a system that was designed to confuse you and now uh, God reveals a strategy that has been tested and back tested and proven to be a positive, uh, uh, positive results. And now uh, we are giving away the, the training on the strategy and, and people, uh, we need to take advantage of, of the opportunity to learn this, this strategy. And so, uh, uh, why not? Why not? Why not take a few moments uh, in in the evening to, to 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 become a part and listen? Just listen. 
Uh, you know, why not li just listen and, and see if not if you can't see the opportunity and see God whispering to you, this is your opportunity uh, to not have to uh, uh, do do that nine to five. I was talking to a pastor last night. He said, "Man, I got to quit this job. I got to quit this job. I'm trying to get disagree, and uh, I just don't have the time." And uh, I've offered him this opportunity, and he thinks it's more opportunity in, in driving a bus all day, and uh, he could make. Uh, more in one hour at five o'clock in the morning, uh, just uh, listening to the instructions and uh, following instructions and make more in an hour than he would in a whole month driving that bus. But he won't, it just stuck in the old ways and in the old path. And pretty soon, you know, you get that, uh, uh, Eddie Griffin said there's, there's several kinds of Negroes out here. And uh, the, the Negro who is the still a, still a slave-minded Negro who, uh, he's a comedian, he's, uh, he's making, making fun, but he makes a strong point, who still uh, thinks that he's a slave and has a slave mindset and thinks that all he needs is a good job. <laughs> I can't with you with that, Bishop. But no, but you are so right. And 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 I mean, this is where that shift has to happen. I mean, it has to. So just understanding for our listening audience, understanding that this movement is an economic empowerment movement. I'm gonna say that again. Be your own bank is an economic empowerment movement. That is who we are. And so we're built on the scripture, right? Psalms 127, where you, it talks about unless the Lord builds the house, those the, those builders labor in vain. So if we know that and we're building on that, and we also have a faith and finance ministry. Now, one thing I want to understand is, is we are responsible because God called us. So if he called us to make a change, and he called us because he, he blessed the visionary with a vision of economic empowerment. He blessed me with a strategy. And then, I mean, come on now, you got a PhD in finance and economics. I mean, like, where, where do they do, where they, like, how, let me say it how you, the way you said it, Bishop, where they do that at, right? So, mm -hmm. the, you know, just, just think about that for a moment. So we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to make sure that we create the value because this is economic empowerment. Like that is our entire focus is empowering you. But yet people are thirsty. But yet if we don't have, if they don't understand the value and what we're giving them to drink, they're going to reject it. So we have a responsibility to create value, but at the same time, understanding that everybody is, is not going to drink what's required. So it just makes me think about, I'm gonna pull a Dr. B with the stories, you know, cause it just makes me think about um, when I was in on active duty in the military, you have, you know, one of the things that soldiers do is is the sodas like we sleep so it's coffee you will see a lot of coffee and mountain dew and mountain dew and coffee and things like that so it becomes something you're accustomed to what were we just talking about water we're talking about it flowing we're talking about that one of the things that all of that does is give you kidney stones you know it, it does so i can't tell you how many people i know that i know and one of the guys was so bad he never drank water he refused to drink water like he would not even drink water where you put something in the water to make it not taste like water. He wouldn't do it, but he would drink Mountain Dew all day. And several times a year, he'd be in the hospital with kidney stones. He would be, you know, having to pass those things. I can't imagine, you know, I've never had one, but I'd have had a baby and I've heard people compare it to having a baby. You know, I, I still don't, you know, it's nothing like having a baby, but what I'm saying is the point I'm making is that to have to pass one of those things and to know, to know, to like, I couldn't have a baby a few times a year. Like I couldn't do that. Like, how do you do that intentionally knowing what's going to come and yet refuse to change? You have those people out there. All he had to do was drink the water and he wouldn't be in the hospital three to four times a year having to pass stones. He wouldn't be there. It's, so he knows he's putting himself in excruciating pain. He knows that he's going to just sit there and be uncomfortable. He knows what's coming, but yet he refuses to pick up some water. So what we have is water. 
what we have is 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 your freedom and it's like sometimes we have to one create the value but we also have to accept you got your water too bishop i see you so what we have to accept the people and understand that some people just gonna want to have to keep passing that stone they're not willing to let it go they're not willing to forget all that they're not willing to do what's required to make that shift and i say god bless you and hopefully one day you wake up because it's right just the water is right here it's here that's right that's right but we gotta we gotta be willing to move past and release ourselves from from those past methods of survival. Because many times uh, we find out that people have simply been surviving all their lives. And you talk about uh, the pain, the pain of economic crisis. Every month there's an economic crisis. Boy, I gotta get this paid, I gotta get that paid. Oh, they're gonna, the man might come and snatch my car, the man might turn my lights out, the man might do this. That's a reality for for, for a lot of our people. And and and, and just one, there's one trade a month will we'll, we'll change your lifestyle and those concerns. And so we just want you to learn how, how to do what the rest of the world is doing. Dr. Pipewood. Oh, you said my food there. You know, I really want to piggyback on Miss Dyer's story. That was an outstanding example. And I want to make a couple points about it. First of all, for those of you that uh, may not have you know, any medical knowledge of how the kidney work, the kidney, is the starting point of the elimination system. So if you're not drinking the water, then obviously your elimination system is uh, affected. But that made me think of something that came from our own uh, C. Thomas Gambrell. So I've told this story a few times in public, but I'll tell it now. I had a brain tumor in 2008. And C. Thomas Gambrell is one of my best friends. And when I told him about it, he asked me this question. He said, what mental thought pattern are you going through that will cause the brain tumor? And of course, I got offended because when we get sick, we want people to care for us. We want to be a victim. We want people to say it's going to be okay. Can I bring you a casserole? We want all that. And he's asking me about my mental thought pattern. And he told me the story of this gentleman who grew up with him, who had a father that was very aggressive and demeaning and wouldn't let him talk. And so as a result of him being closed and not having an ability to express himself, he grew up and manifested that in his body. So I'm talking about the field of metaphysics where there's a mental pattern that causes all of our physical ailments. And when I tell you that the metaphysical reason for brain tumor fits me perfectly. So I started, watch this, I started pouring into other people who were having health conditions because of him being loving enough to say that to me. Now, I said all of that because I want you to think about this. We also have to recognize that we have to walk in the law of allowing. There's a movie called What the Bleep Do We Know, which explains the, the concept of our thinking versus our subconscious. And, and since this is a spiritual show, we should understand that the subconscious, <coughs> excuse me, and the spirit are the same thing. They just operate from different perspectives. So in what the belief do we know, they talk about the fact that when you start doing something over and over and over, you create a groove in your brain and the groove takes over. So you're not making a conscious decision to be in the hospital four times, you're just caught up in the groove and something has to happen to shock you into seeing it different. So my point to you is, while we're having these conversations and while we're observing people doing things that don't make logical sense to us, we have to understand that it is that groove that is, that is what that person is going through. And sometimes we say things the right way that makes them feel, just see it. But while we're going through that process, we have to keep loving on them because that doesn't make sense to anybody who's listening. But he was in that groove. And until he changes the groove in his brain from the inside out, he'll keep making those mistakes. You're absolutely right. And just, I got a caveat. I got to, I got to, because when we talk about how ordained this movement is and, and how, because how ironic, right, is it that Dr. B and I had the same condition, the same exact thing, the same situation, 
the same ailment. Like how, and it's not too many people I know that actually have that. I know we hear about it, but we had the exact same thing. And I want to point out the, the what I want to share with you and what I want you to grasp from this is that sometimes we forget. I am the only person I know that didn't have to have surgery behind that because they will give you surgery because it's going to keep growing. It has to come out, right? You can't leave it in there. And, and what I'm saying is when I found out that I had that, you know, and I found out that I was going through that, one of the things that I started doing because I was new to Jacksonville, I didn't have family, I didn't know anybody and to be down for three to six months or however long it can take you to recover and all of that and me being a single parent, it's just not a space that I was willing to live in. And so I started, you talk about mental, we talk about affirmations and mindset so much with this movement because your empowerment is so important. And, and, and what I began to do was pray. I began to meditate. I also began to speak healing. Like I, it wasn't going, oh, I don't want to have surgery, God. No, I was speaking that I am healed. I was speaking that, you know, there, it, I was speaking, it's, it, it's normal. I'm speaking, you know, life over me. And what happened is it began to shrink. It began to go away. It began to dissolve to the point to where I had one of the highest MRIs that you can have because my doctor mentioned, he said, I've never seen this before. And so he, and so even he'll make, he made me come back every year for so many years uh, because it's been over the last 10 year span and the initial and now every so many years because he's like, I still need to know. And I'm like, you don't know my doctor. You don't know who healed me. But I'm but it also I couldn't wallow in the misery. But then fast forward, sometimes we forget. That's the point I'm making now. Sometimes we forget. Sometimes we forget the wrong things. You see, when God said forget all that. Sometimes we forget the wrong things, right? Sometimes we forget those things because what happened is I was in a car accident. Um, I, I, I was tail ended at a red light, car totaled. And my back was hurting. MRI on my back, my back was hurting. We were at an event and Dr. Bifuer saw the pain in me because I'm trying to play it off. You know, I don't do pain very well. Like, I'm like, nope, I'm not living here. I'm not walking in this. But it was one of those pains. I couldn't sit. And so I'm standing up in the back. But what he did is he gave me something to meditate on, some vibrations. So, so you know, where I can vibrate. And at first I gave him his phone back. He said, no, keep it. You know, I need you to just focus on this. And as I focused on the healing vibrations, my back pain began to subside. When I cut it off, it came back. So what I did for a week is like for, and I'm like, I already know this, why? But it took someone to bring it back to me. So sometimes we gotta be open to receive. We have to be open to receive because they couldn't figure out their like pinch nerves, this, this, that, and all these other things. But I did it for a week where the only thing I focused on, I listened to the same thing that he gave me consistently for an entire week. I tell you, I never went back and picked up those MRI results. I still don't know what was wrong with my back because my focus was so much on the healing and so much on the being in the right vibration that I couldn't even be concerned with the latter. I couldn't even be concerned with the other. And to this day, I have still not had a back pain. And that was two years ago. So when that happened. And so I want you to understand, you got to be in the right mindset and you have to be focused on the right thing. So once again, thank you, Dr. B, because you brought that back to me. So. Very welcome. Absolutely amazing how I hear uh, two words that we've used, we often use, uh, groove and vibration. Uh, usually we hear that when we're in a, 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 a joyous, jubil, jubil, jubilous atmosphere. Uh, get in the groove. I'm just grooving and getting with the vibration. Matter of fact, one of my musicians calls himself Vibe to this day. And, and so uh, that, that's so important that we get uh, in the groove. We need, this is a groove that we all need to, need to get in and get involved and uh, receive, and that's the next level that we wanna talk about, the process of embracing uh, the move of God. 
getting in the same pattern, the same vibration with God and what God is doing. You know, many times we, we're so often, there's so many things that we're fighting off. We, we, we already set not to receive something. We already set that somebody's trying to take advantage of us. Somebody's trying to uh, mistreat us. And so we, we're set to reject information. We, we, we hide when people knock on our door with their Bible in their hand. We don't open the door. We don't want to receive information, unfamiliar information. We, we think something wrong. Those who take advantage of us teach us not to receive somebody who's teaching you something different from what they've been teaching you. And, and so, you know, when we look back at the historical perspective of a lot of the information that we received, that information was designed to keep us in bondage and for us not to be set free uh, of, that, of, of that bondage. I was talking to with a friend of day, and I said, man, uh, do you know that the college that you went to that in the four year that college is uh, pictures of Nathan, Nathan Bedford Forrest, uh, J Jackson, General Jackson, and then they were friends of the founder of that college. I said, now, what, what do you think those people thought about you uh, today? Now, you embraced all that information, and that information that you were taught in that institution was designed to keep you in a certain place. And I don't think we, we understand that. We have to check out where we're getting information. And we join institutions that historically were designed to keep us in a place of servanthood. And, and so now God is, God is doing something new and different with us. He's giving us a new opportunity. And that servant's mindset that we have been in, instilled in us, uh, causes us to reject that because it's a different, if, if you don't mind, Dr. Bible, it's a different groove from what we're accustomed to because the groove that we're accustomed to is one that is designed to keep us uh, in a subservient area. I mean, if, if, if the way they think, if everybody's wealthy, then who's gonna wash the dishes? Who's gonna mop the floor? And so the, the system is set up where it's, it ha there has to be a certain level of, uh, of, of people who are not successful or who don't enjoy what we call the American dream. And so God is erasing the dream and God saying, okay, there's a new, whole brand new playing field here, a whole new set of opportunities. Information that's been hidden in plain sight is now available to you and because you haven't experienced it before, don't run from it. Don't be afraid of it, but embrace it. This is your opportunity to embrace this information. And we talked about, we've been talking, Mr. Dyer, we've been talking a lot about embracing, but we want to make sure that we, uh, we share with people how they can take an opportunity to embrace what we're talking about, to, to, to expose themselves to what we're talking about uh, so that they can take advantage of this information that we're sharing well it's it's real easy it's it's real easy so there are going to be two ways that you can join us now you can text byob to 55469 yes text byob to 55469 i'm gonna say that again 55469 and byob means bank bank be your own bank this is economic empowerment don't text that number looking for something else all right so it's be your own bank but then also Tonight, let me tell you, I love this movement. I love the process. I love, you know, what was happening and the impact that's having because it's not just me. It's other, yes, God gave me a strategy, but when that duplication happens, you see, the, the, see and that means that it's going to happen where the 2 million families are going to be reached around the world. So tonight, yes, tonight, go to our YouTube channel, get subscribed right now. Be your own bank movement. Spell it out. Go on YouTube and type in the words, be your own bank movement is going to pop up and you're going to click subscribe. And you're going to sit in front of that channel tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you're going to see a powerful young lady, a powerful woman who is going to really break down for you all what this movement is all about, 
how to understand how you can turn a market into your personal ATM and then also help you understand. Now, hear me. I'm, I'm uh, what, what y'all don't give me on camera all the time. Dr. B on his call, you lean into the camera. Six figures in six months because what's happening, what's happening is we compound out. And I want you to think about this and I need you to embrace this because for whatever reason, we accept the fact that we compound out. We accept the fact that when we buy that house, that I'm not paying that sticker price. It's gonna take me 30 years to pay this off. And at the end of 30 years, it's never going, it's not even gonna be close to what I pay for it, right? So we accept that. We accept the fact that you buy that car, it went from four years to now, I think they even do six years that they'll finance and you know you're not paying that sticker price. Or what about that credit card? When you swipe that, you know you're not paying that final price. So we accept compounding out all the time. We accept giving more than the value of what something's worth. We, we accept that and it's just normal. But yet when we talk about being able to duplicate our own, we're duplicating somebody else's. And when we start talking about being able to duplicate our own, now, you know, we, we, we hesitate. No, we need to embrace. We're going to vibrate in the same way we vibrate out. We compound out. We're going to learn how to compound in. Bishop was just talking about universities. Universities, remember, that's a business. That's a business. That's what a lot of people miss. We get excited. We went to college. That's why attrition is so high. Because we're excited we went to school, we're excited we got accepted, we're excited we're there, but now why am I here? What am I doing? But yet that space and that place is teaching you how to go out and negotiate for a salary, a salary, which is the exact same thing coming in. We're bringing in a linear income and think we're supposed to have a living wage. Think that we're supposed, we compound out everything that we do. We pay an interest out everywhere that we go, but we think that we're supposed to have a living wage with a linear income when we're putting out more than we're bringing in. You see, this is why empowerment is important because we're gonna empower you to understand how to compound in, how to bring it in and stop just pushing it out. I can't change the credit cards, but I can change what I do in my own personal household. You can change how much you even need to use them, right? You can change how you purchase. You can change those things. And when you understand all of that, you now are beginning to understand that you control the financial narrative in your life. Only you can control all of that and you can literally become your own bank. Before we close out, Dr. B, you got something you want to add? Or is that Bishop, you? Dr. Blackwood, please. Well, we're right on the edge of ending the call. I just think we said some really good things today, and I'm really happy that we were able to provide so much value to our listening audience. That's just wonderful, and we're excited about uh, the opportunity to share with you today. We actually continue every Tuesday at 5 to, to join us uh, by, the, by the media that you join today, whether it's Facebook, whether it's uh, the radio or uh, internet or whatever medium you're using, we appreciate and we look forward to seeing you again. Miss uh, Dyer has some things that she wanted to close us out, the, 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 and so we want to let her go ahead and do that. Absolutely, absolutely. So don't forget, you get to see our Pip Master, right? You you get to spend some time with her this evening. Make sure you're tuned in. Go subscribe, 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 subscribe right now. Subscribe. Be your own bank movement. Be Your Own Bank Movement, also on Facebook, Be Your Own Bank Movement. Everywhere you go, everywhere you look, Be Your Own LinkedIn, Be Your Own Bank Movement, Clubhouse, Be Your Own Bank Movement. We're everywhere because we're going to impact you worldwide. But I want you to go pick up a copy of your book. Yes, Be Your Own Bank Movement, Hidden in Plain Sight. Now we're on the air and we're in Jacksonville. So as we close out, I need you also to make sure that you go, you set your calendars because at noon on the 18th, let me tell you, at noon on the 18th of this month, I want you to plan to be with us. I want you to plan to be with us because we're bringing it to Jacksonville. So rejoice904.com, rejoice904.com. Hear me clearly, Jacksonville, Florida, the Be Your Own Bank Movement Tour, where you're going to see us live and in person and understand exactly how you could be your own bank. But I can't leave out Milwaukee because guess what, Milwaukee? We are coming there as well. So you want to make sure you need more information, you want to chime in, you want to be in one of these locations, BYOB, 
to 55469, BYOB to 55469, Milwaukee, Jacksonville, and make sure because we're coming to Atlanta real soon. So you want to make sure you're tuned in. You want to make sure that you're present and you show up because we're going to empower you, empower people, empower people, but you're going to be empowered to where you can be your own walking ATM and you can control the financial narrative in your life. So I love you all. God bless. I will definitely see you on tonight, but make sure you back for this show next week because we're going to keep doing it and we're going to keep doing it and doing it and doing it until the job gets done. You deserve success. I don't know what it looks like for you, but I know you deserve it. So own it, dream it, and make it a reality. We love you and we will see you next week. Have a great week.